Next, we're going to create our recipes list. So we'll go ahead into our recipes template and create a new file called recipes.html. We'll then move over to our views and we're going to import another generic view. This time it's going to be a list view. So the list view is another class-based view that will allow us to provide a model and it will then give us back a list of all of our recipes. So we'll go ahead and create our class and we'll call this one recipes and we will pass in our list view. Now I just want to note here that if we named this class recipe this would actually cause an issue later on down the line so do make sure that it's recipes because when we make our next couple of views like our detail view and stuff when we actually try and provide the model that it comes from if we have the same model name and the class name then Django can get confused and what it actually tries to do is load our model class rather than our actual model so we'll go ahead now and just give it a doc string. So we're going to give it a template name so it knows what to load and that is in our recipes app and it's called recipes.html. We'll also give it the model for which we want the list to come from which is going to be our recipe model. The last thing we're going to give it is a context object name and we're going to call this recipes. So the context is what we send from the back end to the front end and we use our Django templating then to iterate and access the different properties of those objects. So by default a list view creates the context underneath the hood so we can't see that but we do know it's a list view and we've told it that we're using the recipe model so what it will do is it will go off and it will get all of those recipes and it will send that back into the front end in something called the context so for example if you were to do this without a list view you might have a class um, get context data or a query set and you'd be able to say okay I'm doing a blog I'm going to send back the blog object so I'll go and get the blog that I want and then I'll go off and I'll find all the comments associated to that and we'll send them all back in the context so by default the context object name is object list so if we wanted to call it something more appropriate to what we're actually doing we can give it a context object name so we either can then use that to iterate through our objects on the front end so we will be doing that very shortly in our recipes page We'll go ahead now into our urls.py and we will import our new class. So we'll create a new path and this time we'll call it recipes. We're going to pass in our recipes class and that will be as view and then we will give it a name of recipes. Next we're going to go ahead and fill in our template. So we'll start by extending from our base.html. And we'll go ahead and add in our block title. So I'm going to call this page recipes. We will then go ahead and open our block content tags and close those off. So I'm going to use a lot of bootstrap classes here for the container 
Um, so I want the container to be a flex container, I want the items in it to wrap when the row becomes too long, and I want to justify the content to send it. So I'll create the div with a class of container, dflex, flex row, flex wrap, and justify content center. So next I'm going to create a H1. We'll give that the usual text center class and some padding too. I'm going to call this latest recipes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to iterate through our list of objects. Okay, so you remember using the context object name, we called it recipes, which will enable us to use the for loop to say for recipe in the recipes. And we'll close off the for loop. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and copy a card component from Bootstrap. So we'll head on over to the Bootstrap website and we will copy out their card component. So before I paste that in, I'm going to create an anchor tag um, because I want these cards to be clickable. So whenever anybody clicks them, it will go ahead and take them to the recipe detail. So we'll give this a class of recipes. And for now, I'll leave the href blank because we don't have the recipes detail page yet. We will be doing that in the next video, so we'll come back to that then. So we're going to give it an area label and we'll say click to view and what we're actually going to do here is we're going to access the object's title so if this was banana waffle for example the area label that's read to a screen reader will say click to view banana waffle okay so because we are looping through it each time we loop this will create a new anchor and each individual recipe will have their own titles. So within that, we're going to go ahead and create our card by pasting that in. I'm going to make a few small changes to the card class. So I want to add a margin of three into the outer div. I'm going to change the image to have an alt of our recipe image alt. I am going to update the source, so this will be our recipe.image.url. I'm going to remove the anchor from the bottom as we won't be using that one. And we're going to replace the title with our recipes title, so recipe.title. And we will replace the paragraph with our recipes description. So the recipe description can become quite long and I don't want to have huge amounts of white space where the cards grow and some has a little bit of text and some has a lot. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use truncate chars in order to only display 100 characters from the description. If I can spell that correctly. So I'm also going to update this heading level five and I'm going to switch it for H2. You shouldn't skip heading levels. Um, it's A, it's not good practice and B, for users of assistive technology, heading levels are actually read out to the user. So that helps relay you know, the importance of this part of the page. So we would never go from say a H1 to a H3 or a H4 and not have a H2 on, but we could say have a H1, have a H2 that had a sub H3, and then we might have another heading two with another heading three. Things like that are fine. 
So we'll go ahead now and we will go into our base.css and we will add some styling on those classes. So the card class, which is a bootstrap class, we just want to add a little bit more onto it. So I'm going to target the card class and I'm going to give it a height of 90% and I'm just going to give it a margin top of 1 REM. The next one then is our recipes class that we added. So for this one we're going to give it a text decoration of none as I don't want the underline and we're going to give it a color so we'll use our black variable that we made in our root variables. So the last thing that I want to do then is add the hover effect to the recipes so when they hover over the card um, we'll change that cursor into a pointer. So the last thing we need to do now is we need to hook our recipes up to our nav bar. So we'll go ahead into our header and we will update the href for this and we will use the URL of recipes and we may go ahead and copy over this active class. So don't forget to change the URL name to recipes which again is the one we created in the URL pattern. So we'll go ahead now and we'll start our run server And we'll go ahead over to our recipes page and there we can see it. So this is not supposed to be here. <laughs> so we'll go ahead back and just fix that up. So we'll go back into our recipes and we will take out our heading level one. And we'll paste that above the recipe container and that's looking perfect now. So I just want to check the responsiveness and see what this would look like if we had multiple um, recipes. So we'll go ahead and open up our dev tools by right clicking and inspecting. We can then hover over our anchor, right click and we can duplicate the elements. So we'll create an odd number. So seven. So it looks good on mobiles. We'll extend it out and it goes into threes which is all good. I want to just try and check that on slightly larger screens. Awesome. So our flex wrap is working as intended. So next up we're going to create the recipe detail page so that when we click on any of these um, we will be able to see all of the information including the instructions.